Okay, this is uh, going to be hopefully a quick summary of uh, my own summaries of chapter 3 notes about attribution and social explanation, which is derived from the reading of Social Psychology, the 8th edition, by Vagon and Hogg. Uh, I'll be talking about what seeking causes of behavior, how people attribute causality, extensions of attributional theory, applications of attributional theory, attributional biases, intergroup attributions, and social knowledge and societal attributions. So basically, we seek causes for behavior. Uh, there's this important idea of the attribution. Attributions are processes of assigning a cause to our own behavior and of others. And attribution theories are just theories about attributions. How people attribute causality. You have Haida in 1958 who believed that social psychologists uh, study people's naive psychological theories uh, in order to see how these well, influence ordinary people's everyday perceptions. The idea of the naive psychologist is a model of uh, social cognition that characterizes people as using rational scientific like um, cause effect analyses to understand the world. And uh, Haida believed in three principles, which included how we feel that our own behavior is motivated and look for causes. And that's what we also for others. Likewise, are the same. We also uh, use these attributions to predict and control the environment. And these are used to distinguish personal factors from environmental factors. We have uh, interpersonal, I mean, internal dispositional attributions, which are processes of assigning the causes of our own or others' behavior to internal or dispositional factors. And external or situational attributions, on the other hand, which are assigning the causes of our or others' behaviors to external or the situational factors. Uh, from these acts to dispositions according to Jones and Davis, they propose a theory of uh, correspondent inference where causal attribution of behavior is due to one's dispositions, uh, internal attribution basically. And they propose like five sources of informational cues which are freely chosen behavior uh, indicative of disposition than is behavior rather than uh, behavior under control of the external environment. Behavior affects exclusively uh, to the behavior uh, rather than common to many behaviors. Basically, non-common effects or behaviors, effects that are relatively exclusive to that particular behavior, and there's outcome biases where belief and the outcomes of behaviors were intended by the person who chose the behavior, even though that might not be the case. Socially desirable behavior tells little of the person's actual disposition. It's probably likely to conform with societal norms, and you also have to consider what, like, uh, hedonic relevance, how the behavior impacts us, and personalism. Behavior appears to be directly intended to benefit or harm uh, ourselves, as opposed to focusing on others. People as everyday scientists proposed by what Kelly's co-variation model, in which people assign courses of behavior to factors that are co vary and most closely with that occur most closely with the behavior. People act like scientists in trying to identify co-varying factors, which establishes a um, causal relationship to maintain decisions in these attributes. There's three um, three things that people look for, including consistency information, whether the information about the extent to which a behavior always co-occurs with a stimulus occurs with a stimulus. And there's distinctiveness information, which is information about whether a person's reaction occurs only with uh, one stimulus. It is common to if it is basically judging whether it's a common reaction to the many stimuli, then you also have consensus information whether other people also agree about the, the cause or whatever. There's also an idea of discounting, which is where there are one cannot form a consistent relationship because a specific cause and behavior causes uh, a specific behavior and cause a behavior is just discounted or rationalized or whatever. That cause is discounted in favor of some other uh, cause. There's of course limitations to every model, so one shouldn't be surprised that there's limitations in this co-variation model, where people use uh, pre-packaged consistency, distinctiveness, and consistency information to attribute causality. They already have their own preconceived notions, basically, and people are actually very bad at assessing co-variation. And as stated, co-variation is not causation. Uh, you have this idea of causal schemata, which are experience-based beliefs about how certain types of causes interact to produce an effect. Extensions of attribution theory. Uh, we, as people, like to explain our emotions. These emotions have two distinct categories, I mean components. They include physiological arousal and cognitions. So basically what you think and um, how you feel, uh, other way around. Anyway, there's a hypothesis that if emotions depend on our cognitive label of them, then basically we could just like transform the pressure into cheerfulness uh, simply by re-attributing arousal. This, by the way, is a... Uh, it's, there, there are limits to this emotional mobility, since emotions are significantly less liable, uh, label, or able to label. Uh, like environmental cues are not readily accepted as the basis for inferring emotions. We basically like to um, infer our emotions as a result of our own disposition, like, oh, we feel this, that, that happened, and not infer that it is caused by the environment or something other happening. Uh, this culminates in a misattribution effect, which is unreliable, uh, since emotions are short-lived and it is not clear whether they are mediated by attributional processes. So there's not, one doesn't really know that much. Hence the need for social psychologists to study all this stuff. Okay, attribution of our own behavior. Uh, ben proposed the idea of the self-perception theory, which gained, uh, which stated that we gain knowledge of ourselves only by making self-attributions. This is basically inferring our own attributes from our own behavior. Our own attitudes from our own behavior. So like behavior comes first and then attitude comes about. Secondly, uh, there's task performance attributions where we perform on the task making an achievement. Attribution uh, requires Making an achievement attribution requires locus. Whether, as stated, it is uh, internal or external, there's also an idea of stability, whether it's like, similar to consistent, consistency in what Kelly's variation model, whether it occurs like, most of the time or rarely, and you also have controllability, which is uh, what extent is future performance under the actor's control. And from that, individuals make uh, causal attributions for performance. And yada yada. Critics suggest controllability may be less important than first uh, for uh, Wiener in 1995 emphasized the idea of responsibility. Okay, applications of attributional theory, there's attributional styles, where individuals have um, predispositions, personalities, to make a certain type of causal attribution for behavior. You have internals, uh, where it is believed that they have significant uh, personal control over their destiny, and externals, which are more fatalistic uh, in believing that they have little control over what happens to them. 
uh, the depressive attributional style tends to be more internal, stable, and uh, global, as in happening all the time, or they see it as happening all the time to them. People basically view aversive events as caused by themselves. Interpersonal relationships, there's three basic phases. They include formation, which is uh, the attributions, reduce ambiguity and facilitate communication, uh, which helps uh, understand a relationship occurring, that occurs. And you have maintenance, which is a need to attribute, need to create these attributes because uh, stable personalities and relationships have been established. And then there's dissociation in these interpersonal relationships, where one increasingly like, attributes, uh, one increasingly is what like, characterized by attributes in order to regain an understanding of like, what happened to the relationship or something like that. Yeah, something along the lines of that. Okay, you have attributional conflict where partners pro offer divergent uh, causal interpretations of behavior and disagree. Such as, for example, like uh, miscommunication in every relationship that's, that's ever happened because people have their own uh, theories or attributions as to why this certain behavior is so and so or such and such occurring. And there's like attributional blame, which, as I said before, couples sometimes disagree on what is cause and effect of said behavior. And uh, yeah, negative behaviors tend to be what? External, unstable, specific, uncontrollable. <coughs> Okay, you have attributional biases, for example, there's cognitive misses, which are models of social cognition characterizing people as using uh, the least complex and demanding uh, cognitions that are able to produce uh, generally adaptive behaviors. So as stated in what, like, the first video, that they're basically mental shortcuts. Uh, there's motivational tactician uh, within this idea of correspondence bias and the fundamental attribution error. A motivated uh, tactician is a model of social cognition characterizing people as having uh, multiple cognition cognitive strategies available which they choose among on the basis of personal goals, motives, and needs. Correspondence bias is uh, where people have an inflated tendency to see behavior as reflecting their personality traits. So basically you're like overlooking the power of the situation and saying that all oh, this behavior actually was to do with me, me, me. And you have the fundamental attribution uh, error, which is a bias in attributing another's behavior more to internal rather than situational uh, yeah, causes. So it's similar to uh, correspondence bias. Essentialism is the pervasive uh, tendency to consider behavior that reflects the underlying and immutable or unique properties of people by or people or groups they belong to. Again, using the fundamental uh, attribution error, which you could like to explain like characteristics of certain ethnic groups or basically stereotyping and whatnot. Okay, different explanations of correspondence biases include focus of attention. The actor's uh, behavior attracts more attention than what actually happens in the background, but this is a matter of uh, salience. Then you have differential forgetting, where attributing uh, requires the representation of causal information in memory. People readily forget uh, situational rather than disposition causes, as well as uh, linguistic facilitation. Basically, the English language makes it easier to describe events in, like, uh, from the perspective of actor action situations. Uh, there's like cultural and developmental factors. I'm not going to go into this actor observe effects, which is the tendency to attribute our own uh, behavior externally and others' behavior internally. Uh, these two main there are two main explanations, which include perception focuses, which are a matter of perception, uh, where actors have different perspectives than the observer and their behaviors stand out. There's informational differences, different perspectives, uh, different circumstances, as well as different understanding of what uh, is happening. The false consensus effect, we're seeing our own behavior as more typical than it really is. The reason for this is, well, basically our own opi opinions are salient to us at the forefront of our consciousness. And these eclipse the possibility of alternative options. The self-serving biases, which are attributional distortions that protect enhance self-esteem uh, or, uh, or self-concept. So basically we make these attributional distortions in order to uh, similar to like confirmation bias in order to like support what we already believe. Okay, self-handicapping is publicly making advanced uh, external attributions for our anticipated failure or poor performed poor performance in a forthcoming event. Illusion of control, belief that we have actually more control on the environment than what actually is in reality. And there's a belief in just well that good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people in the world is like just a predictable place. Uh, there's intergroup attribution where it is the process of assigning the cause of one and others what behavior to other to group membership. Ethnocentrism is the evaluated preference for all aspects of our group relative to other groups. And there's uh, the ultimate attribution error is the tendency to attribute how out groups, uh, attribute bad outgroup and good in-group behavior internally, attribute the bad outgroup externally, or I mean internally, and group, uh, good in-group behavior internally. And this, and basically also to attribute good outgroup and bad in-group behavior externally. We have, as stated before, stereotypes, which are widely shared in simplified evaluative uh, image of a social group and its members. There's uh, levels of explanations, which are types of concepts or mechanisms and language used to explain a phenomenon and what those ethnocentric intergroup attributions, which are cognitive processes. Social categorization generates uh, category congruent expectations in the form of expectation, ex yeah, ex expectancies, or group prototypes slash stereotypes. The self-esteem process is when people's need for secure self-esteem can be nurtured by making self-favoring comparisons between others in the in or out group or whatever. Okay, social identity theory, I've already stated it previously, many times before, is the theory of group membership and intergroup relations based on self-categorization, social comparison, construction, basically just comparing groups and then these are something identity. Anyway, social representations are collective the collective, collectively elaborated explanations of unfamiliar and complex phenomena that transform them into familiar and simple form. There's like cultural knowledge about causes of things which can be constructed and transmitted by social representations. That's a model by Moskowicki in 1984. And yeah, there's like rumors, gossip, like leveling, where rumors spread quickly, sharpening, where certain features of a rumor are heard selectively, and assimilation, where rumor is distorted in line with people's pre existing prejudices. There's conspiracy theory, which is uh, as you know from all of those wacky videos on the internet, some which probably may be true, uh, uh, explanations of widespread complex and worrying events in terms of premeditated actions of small groups of highly organized conspirators or terms. Societal uh, attributions are emphasis on attributions on social knowledge surfaces in research on people's explanations for large-scale phenomena, so it's like, say, uh, systematic oppression or violence, whatever. And you have cultural contribution, which is people from different cultures often make very uh, different attributions. Thanks for watching. Finally, uh, finished.